So this caught a lot of people by surprise. It looks like King Crimson is done and over with after 53 years of performing. Or is it? On December 8th, 2021, Robert Fripp wrote, King Crimson at the Shibuya Bunkamara Orchard Hall, Tokyo, Wednesday, the 8th of December, 2021. King Crimson's final note of Starless, the last note of this completion tour in Japan, moved from sound to silence at 2104. What is this supposed to mean? <laughs> His recent Facebook posts that aren't responding to social media insults or burning questions have been about living well and without fear. He quotes the guitar craft aphorism, completion is a new beginning, and has been writing with a tone of sentimentality and moving onward. Furthermore, the tour in Japan has repeatedly been called the completion tour on the King Crimson website. Let's consider these other guitar craft aphorisms. An end may be a finish, a conclusion, or a completion. And not even death can end the process of our becoming. Robert's statement about moving from sound to silence is pretty ambiguous, but this seems typical of how he shares information with the world. He says something and a bunch of other people surrounding him offer clarification. Well, that same day, Crimson biographer Sid Smith posted, on this day in 1972, my life was transformed after seeing King Crimson in concert. On this day in 2021, King Crimson played their final note on stage. It's been an incredible journey, profound thanks to all those who've taken part in the adventure and made it so special. Tony Levin's Road Diary is also particularly reminiscent, discussing the ghosts of Crimson's past, being with them, and he's paying tribute to them. He even says, tonight is the final concert of the tour, and quite possibly the final King Crimson concert. Let's also remember the physiological realities. Both Tony Levin and Robert Fripp are 75 years old, and Mel Collins is 74. This is half the band. The rest of the guys have plenty of steam left, but regardless of age, I think touring in a COVID-riddled world would be unbelievably exhausting. Now, this may be the end of King Crimson, but it is not the end of Robert's touring life. He said on more than one occasion, there are no plans for King Crimson to tour beyond Japan this December. However, given the seeming endlessness of questions at varying degrees of temperature, David Singleton and myself are discussing a form of royal package with Q&A, perhaps along the lines of an evening with that awful man and his manager, to visit the U.S. during the second half of 2022. It's also not the end of King Crimson music. Not only is it timeless and will become repertoire for bands around the world, but we're likely to see more music released in the coming years. At my Royal Package show in August, David Singleton mentioned there's still a ton of material left in the vault, and they're going to release a new Frippertronics box set. It wouldn't surprise me to see more recordings from recent years like the new live album that just came out. So, rumors and news aside, this is an incredibly bittersweet moment. King Crimson is a game-changing musical act, and they found so many ways of expressing creativity, innovation, beauty, challenge, discipline, joy, and frustration. Now, I'm particularly grateful that the band did not end with a key member's death or some other ill-fated demise. Rather, the band members are in great health, and they sound better than ever, depending on your tastes, of course. Now, Robert has been the center of the King Crimson universe, but I like to wonder what the world would have been like without the band and its music. Just think of who it brought to our ears. Bill Bruford, Greg Lake, Guitarcraft, Tony Levin, Adrian Ballou, Pat Mastelato, the League of Crafty Guitarists, Trey Gunn, Jacko Jaksic, Mel Collins, The League of Gentlemen, John Wetton, Jamie Muir, Michael and Peter Giles, The California Guitar Trio, David Singleton, Alex Anthony Faida, Steve Ball, Kurt Golden, and honorary musician Sid Smith. <laughs> Think of all the artists who've been heavily influenced by Crimson, like Tool, Keneally, every prog band ever, Primus, Opeth, Stephen Wilson, Between the Buried and Me, and let's not forget all the amazing vocal covers by Petra Hayden. And just go on YouTube and search for King Crimson covers. There's a hundred fantastic unknown musicians across the planet rethinking songs from a 50-year-old catalog. Lonely moon child, dreaming in the shadow Thank <laughs> you.
This music is repertoire. Now, of course, we would likely have come across these wonderful people in some way or another because greatness is in their DNA. But for many of us, myself especially included, we would likely have missed out on the talent showcased by the mighty Krim. In 1968, they rocked the world with In the Court of the Crimson King. In 2021, they defied a global pandemic with performances on two continents, including many sold out shows and packed venues. Music needed to be heard. Although I foolishly did not go to see them on tour in the early 2000s, I did get to see them in LA in 2014. I attended the Guitar Craft intro course in 2015, flew from Germany to Seattle for a friends and family concert in 2017, and saw them one final time in 2021. Many of you know Fracture occupied a significant portion of my mental, physical, and musical energy over the last 22 years. Now here at Make Weird Music, we're planning a simple tribute video that will hopefully include your participation. If you'd like to be included, just make sure you're subscribed and you'll catch the announcement on one of our social media things. We want this to be a special video that expresses gratitude for the music and members of this incredible band. And if you have like an emotional response or if you have any great stories you want to share about King Crimson or how it affected your life or your family or you know whatever it is, your approach to an instrument, I'd love to hear them. Just share something in the comments and uh, it'd be cool to just get a great discussion going, reflecting on however long you've been with this music. For some of you, it's 53 years. <laughs> and for some of you, it might be five or